Hello, and welcome to episode one of Sarastro's Rune Wars painting series, sponsored by Fantasy Flight Games and GTS Distribution. In this episode, we're going to paint the Rune Golem from Fantasy Flight Games' Rune Wars miniatures game. Although there are already some fine examples of how the Rune Golem might be painted, in this video I'll be sharing my approach and would encourage you to explore your own variations when you come to paint your own. Let's take a look at the painting stages. After dry fitting the golem together, I've chosen to prime the miniature in black, followed with some zenithal highlights, which just means spraying a lighter tone from above. We're then going to apply our base colours, and I've chosen quite a dark stony colour for my golem. We're then going to push the contrast by providing both highlights and shade to each area of the miniature. Our finishing touches will include painting the glowing runes and the gemstones, as well as providing some texture to the base. Let's begin. Before doing anything, you may wish to give the miniatures a quick scrub with some soapy water to remove any traces of releasing agent that might be present. Next, you may wish to check for any unwanted mould lines and carefully remove them with a craft knife or a modelling file. We can then assemble the miniature. For the larger figures, such as this golem, the carrion lancer, and the cavalry, I've chosen to paint them mostly in their individual sections to make the otherwise hard to reach places easier to access. However, I'm still going to dry fit them together for the purposes of priming. We now need to prime the miniature using either a spray can primer or an airbrush. Because I'm using an airbrush, I'll be using Vallejo's black surface primer. Although I'm only featuring the rune golem in this video, it would of course make sense to batch spray your entire collection in one go. I'm loading a few drops of airbrush thinner to begin with, just to help prevent the primer from clogging the airbrush. I'm then mixing in a good quantity of the black primer before spraying the miniature. It's important to keep the airbrush moving and to continually rotate the miniature to ensure we achieve full coverage. Once that's fully cured, I'm going to spray on some cold grey from a roughly 45 degree angle to simulate the effect of diffuse light falling from above. This means that the undersides and the deepest recesses should remain black. And finally, I'm going to spray on some pure white directly from above to provide our brightest highlights. This should leave us with high contrast shadows and highlights that, due to the natural transparency of the paint we'll be applying, will heavily contribute to the final look of the model. The same effect can also be achieved with spray can primers, and you could even skip the grey stage if you wish. Here I'm priming this skeleton with Army Painter's Matte Black Primer. And I'm then providing a quick application of matte white from above. Because so much more paint is ejected from a spray can, it's important that we apply this in short bursts. Although using spray cans might produce a more grainy finish, we can still enjoy the main benefits of priming in this way. Here, the skeleton's eye sockets and other heavily shadowed areas remain a nice deep black, but the more upturned areas of cloth, armour, weapon and shield are a bright white, which will make our life much easier when applying our base colours. Once the miniatures are primed, it's time to begin painting. When choosing colours for your golem, it's a good idea to also decide upon a colour scheme for your whole army, because there's nothing like the sight of a unified force on the battlefield. You might take inspiration from a historical faction such as the Roman Empire or the Teutonic Knights, or maybe a fictitious army such as the Knights of Gondor. For my Dakan army, I was inspired by the warriors of Sparta, with their crimson cloaks and tarnished metal armour, but I've also added a touch of turquoise blue, which is designed to link with the glowing blue runes of the golem. As a rough guide, I would suggest picking a central metallic colour, along with just one or two other main colours for your army. Any additional accessories can be painted with neutral browns and greys. I'm therefore going to begin by painting the fabric and the spaulders of my golem with Citadel's Mephiston Red. I'm going to first mount some of the separate pieces using some white tack to minimise my direct handling of the figure. Because the paint is quite thick, I'm thinning it with a couple of drops of water. 
This red has quite a high pigmentation, so we'll only require one or two layers to give us a nice deep colour. Naturally, you should choose whatever main colour you'd like to be the defining tone of your army here, such as blue, yellow or purple for example. For the leather straps I'm going to use an equal mix of Army Painter's Matte Black and Castle Grey. I find these paints to be a little less thick, so require less thinning with water. I'm now going to paint all of the metal areas apart from the sword blades, and you could use any metallic paint you like here depending on the scheme you've chosen. To achieve the tarnished bronze look that I'm after, I'm using an equal mix of Army Painter's Bright Gold and Gunmetal. We may have to do a little retouching with the red as we go. As well as the trim on the spaulders, I'm also using this for the sword handles, chains and the belt. Next I'm going to paint the gems on the swords with some Hydra Turquoise. For the blades of the swords I'm using Citadel's Lead Belcher mixed with a little black and some Hydra Turquoise. Although most dark metallic colours would be fine here, the reason I've chosen Lead Belcher is because it has a slightly more matte finish which makes it easier to glaze over, which I'll be doing in the next stage. Finally, we're going to paint the rocky golem himself. There are a wide range of brown or grey tones that would work well here, and again, you should feel free to experiment with colours of your own. I've decided I want quite a dark tone to help the glowing runes we'll be adding later stand out. So I've chosen an equal mix of Vallejo's German Grey and USA Olive Drab. This will produce quite a dark grey but with a subtle brown tinge. What's important is that I'm going to thin this slightly more than usual. I'm using a roughly equal combination of water and Vallejo's glaze medium to do this, creating an overall 50-50 mix of paint and dilution. Using just water would also be fine. I've only added the medium to help produce slightly smoother coverage. I'm now spreading this evenly over the entire body. What we want to see here is some of the underlying shadows and highlights showing through, which will leave us with very little highlighting to do ourselves later on. Once that's dry, we can see we've managed to preserve the zenithal highlights we added earlier, and overall the golem is already looking pretty good. We're now going to push the contrast further by adding some highlights and shade. I'm now going to provide a very light dry brush to the more upturned edges of the golem using Filthy Cape. I'm using quite a large flat brush for this, and I'm removing most of the paint before lightly brushing the top surface of the golem. The aim here is simply to add a little extra edge definition to the rocky texture. Ordinarily I might want to push these highlights further by using a brighter tone, but I'm deliberately keeping things quite muted so as to allow the glowing runes to better stand out. Next I'm going to increase the depth of the shadows by applying an equal mix of German grey and black. 
Just as with the base colour, I'm thinning this with an equal amount of water and medium, but I'm brushing it selectively just into the areas I want to darken. You can see I'm deliberately darkening the chest area in order to strengthen the glowing rune effect I'll be adding later on. I might even apply some thinned black into the darkest shadows. Next I'm going to shade the metallic detailing using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of Army Painter's Dark Tone Wash with the more brownish Strong Tone. I'm then going to use this to coat all of the metallic areas apart from the sword blades. I'm also shading the leather straps with this. This will produce a slightly darker, more tarnished look and will also collect in the recesses, increasing the definition. Once that's dry, we can add a few small highlights using an equal mix of shining silver and bright gold. Here, I'm just brightening the upturned sections of the belt. and I'm now providing a few small glints to the trim of the spaulders, as well as the chains and the sword handles. Next I'm going to shade all of the red areas using Citadel's Karaberg Crimson, which I've chosen for the cooler, slightly purplish tint it provides. Once that's dry, I'm going to begin highlighting these areas, starting with a thin layer or two of the original Mephiston Red. Here we want to avoid the areas where the shade has collected in the recesses, producing our shadow tone. I'm then going to lighten this by mixing some Army Painter's Mars Red into the base tone in a couple of stages. Each time we lighten the tone, we reduce the area of the highlight.
Here I'm using a damp brush to blur or feather the edge of the transition. For the spaulders, it's okay to stipple the paint on, producing a slightly rougher texture. Here I'm adding my final, smallest highlights with some pure Mars Red, which I'm applying just to the most raised peaks in the fabric. Next I'm going to shade the blades of the swords using the original mix of lead belcher, black and hydro turquoise, except I'm doubling the quantity of black to darken the tone. I'm also thinning this with some additional water to create a heavy glaze. I'm then going to create alternating gradients on each side of the sword by brushing the glaze on in the direction I want to be darkest. We can apply this in a few layers to really push the depth at the darkest end of each facet of the blade. Next I'm going to create a highlight tone using shining silver mixed with a little hydro turquoise. And I'm also going to mix some of this with the shadow colour in a separate well to create an intermediate tone. I'm then painting the brightest end of each facet of the blade with the highlight tone. then applying some of the intermediate tone further down along the blade and wet blending the two together. We can also provide a little edge highlighting with the highlight tone. It's okay if these highlights aren't especially even. As long as there's enough contrast, then the overall effect should still be quite striking. Once we're happy with the shadows and highlights, we're ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the glowing runes. Law tells us that the arcane channels in the golem's surface run bright with blue energy. My approach here will be to firstly paint the main runes on the head and chest. I will then apply some broad object source lighting, with these runes being the primary source of a blue light. I will then paint in some of the smaller glowing channels selectively that run across the rest of the body. So I'm now going to paint some pure white into the chest and head runes to create a bright foundation for the blue we'll be adding in a moment. I'm applying a second layer of this to ensure the tone is as bright as possible. You could also create some glowing eyes if you wish, 
although the effect will be somewhat diminished by how shadowed they are. I'm now going to mix some Hydra Turquoise with a little Demonic Yellow, which I'm going to thin with a roughly equal amount of water. We're then going to simply brush this evenly over the runes. The reason I've added the yellow is just to boost the luminosity to help the runes stand out. I'm now going to thin down some pure Hydra Turquoise and apply it to all the areas of the golem that look like they would catch light from the glowing runes. Notice that I'm taking care to avoid the runes themselves so as to preserve their brightness, but otherwise I'm being quite liberal with how much I cover with this. You'll notice I often push the pigments towards the light source. You might be a little uncertain when you start doing this, but after a few minutes, the illusion will begin to present itself. I'm even covering areas that might not be hit directly by the light. We don't need to be overly strict in this, because light has a way of bouncing off nearby surfaces anyway. We should also hit places like the edges of the spaulders, belt and the swords. We shouldn't be afraid to take this glow quite far, and we can thin the paint down the further we get from the runes due to the light becoming weaker. We can also build up the intensity of the glow the closer we get to the runes by applying additional layers and or gently increasing the concentration. Next I'm going to apply quite a subtle optional touch which is to brush a thin purple wash into some of the areas that aren't affected by the blue glow. I'm thinning this with a roughly equal amount of water and brushing it into some of the dark and mid-tone areas to add a subtle richness to the miniature. I'm particularly interested in some of these surfaces that are facing away from the blue light. This is certainly not an essential step however. I'm also going to mix a little of the turquoise and white into my red base tone to create a slightly colder highlight for the fabric hanging at the front. Now that we've turned the head and chest into a focal area, I'm going to paint some of the other channels that run across the golem's body. I'm once again using some thinned white for this. I'm not painting every single gap on the miniature and you can paint as few or as many of these as you like. A couple of layers of white might be necessary to achieve the level of brightness we're after.
we can then brush on our rune tone. The last thing that needs painting on the golem is the reflections on the gemstones we can see on the swords. To do this I'm going to lighten some hydra turquoise with a little white and some demonic yellow. I'm then going to use this to paint a small curved highlight at the bottom of each gemstone. I'm now going to brighten this slightly by mixing in a little more white and I'm adding a smaller highlight on top. Finally I'm going to add a small pure white spot of light at the top of the gemstone. Once all four gemstones are painted, we're ready to add some texture to the base. To do that, I'm going to use Vallejo's Dark Earth Texture, which is a brush on paste that we can apply directly from the pot. I'm also applying this to the unit trays in the same way. An alternative approach could be to use something like Army Painter's Brown Battleground, in which case you would simply brush on some standard PVA glue and dip the base into the mix. Once the texture is dry, we can go ahead and paint the base using whatever browns you like. Since my texture is already a mid-tone grey-brown colour, I'm going to simply dry brush on a pale beige, Banshee Brown. And I'm tidying up the rim with some plain black. This would now be a good time to glue the golem together. And, if you want to protect your miniature, you might like to spray on a matte varnish. Finally, I'm going to apply some grass to the base by brushing some PVA glue onto all of the areas I want the grass to stick. Because I'm playing on a grass-covered battlefield, I've chosen to cover most of the base, but I'm still leaving a few sporadic bare patches for the sake of a little variety. I'm then covering the base with Army Painter's Field Grass. Once the glue is dry, we can shake off the excess, and I've chosen to add one or two larger tufts of grass using Army Painter's Swamp and Jungle Tufts, which can be stuck on with super glue. And I'm also going to add one or two lowland shrubs. And this completes the rune golem. Thank you for watching, I hope you found some of the ideas in the video useful. Don't forget, it wouldn't be difficult to apply the basic techniques described, but with colour choices of your own. If you'd like further guidance, or if you'd like to share painting ideas with other enthusiasts, head over to the Fantasy Flight Games forums, which you can find a link to in the description below. You'll also find a full list of products used as well as links to my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages. 
Join me again soon, because next we'll be painting the Carrion Lancer from Rune Wars The Miniatures Game. Happy painting!